Welcome to today's lesson on Jean Piaget's Cognitive Development Theory. Piaget's theory is a fundamental framework that explains how children think, learn, and grow intellectually throughout different stages of life. It's not just about what children learn, but how they approach understanding the world around them. As future teachers, knowing these stages is crucial for effectively engaging your students and fostering their cognitive growth. Cognitive development refers to how children's thinking evolves over time. Piaget believed that learning happens through a process where the child constantly interacts with their environment. Imagine how your mind adapts and changes when you encounter new information, this is what we're exploring today. But have you ever wondered, how do children organize all the new things they learn? Let's begin by understanding the basic concepts. Piaget identified several key concepts to explain cognitive development. We'll cover schema, adaptation, assimilation, accommodation, equilibrium, and disequilibrium. Each one plays a vital role in how children process and organize knowledge. Think of these as building blocks for learning. As future teachers, how might these help you approach your classroom? Let's start understanding first what is schema. Schema refers to cognitive structures by which individuals intellectually adapt to and organize their environment. This is also an organized unit of knowledge. The child uses this to be able to understand a situation or an experience which will serve as basis for organizing actions to respond to the environment. Piaget defined a schema as the mental representation of an associated set of perceptions, ideas, and or actions. Piaget also considered schemata to be the basic building blocks of thinking. Schemas are like mental blueprints or frameworks we use to understand and interact with the world. For example, a child might have a dog schema that helps them identify different dogs they encounter. These mental structures allow children to navigate their environments. In the classroom, when a student grasps a new concept, they fit it into an existing schema or modify it to make sense of new experiences. Second on our list is adaptation. This is the process of adjusting thinking in response to new experiences. In your future classrooms, this will happen constantly as students encounter new ideas and adjust their understanding. Think about it, how do we as adults adapt to unfamiliar situations? This is precisely what happens in children's minds as they learn. So on our next slide, as I've mentioned, under adaptation we have two. First one is assimilation, this is when a child incorporates new information into an existing schema. Picture an infant who uses a sucking reflex developed from sucking on a pacifier when trying to suck on a bottle for the first time. Similarly, your students might try to fit new lessons into what they already know whether it fits perfectly or not. Second one is the accommodation. It is the process of changing cognitive structures in order to accept something from the environment. This is also the process of creating a new schema. This occurs when children modify, change, or alter their schemas to fit new experiences. Going back with my example earlier in assimilation. Imagine a child who must adjust their sucking schema from using a pacifier to drinking from a cup. As teachers, you will witness students reshaping their ideas to make sense of new concepts. Have you ever noticed how some students struggle to adjust their understanding, while others adapt easily? Now lastly, we must get familiarized with the concept of equilibrium. This is when a child's schemas match their experiences. While we are experiencing disequilibrium when there's a mismatch between what they expect and what they encounter. Imagine teaching a math concept that completely contradicts what a student already believes they're thrown into disequilibrium, which causes them to adapt. This balance between comfort and challenge is key to learning. As you can notice also, we are in an almost never-ending cycle of disequilibrium and equilibrium. The process of adaptation, assimilation, disequilibrium, accommodation, and returning to equilibrium is a continuous cycle. Think about it like solving a puzzle. Every new piece either fits, assimilation, or makes you reconsider your approach, disequilibrium, until finally, the picture becomes clear, equilibrium. This cycling process is something you'll witness often as a teacher. Now, I think you're ready to learn more about this theory. Let's proceed to the introduction of the cognitive development theory of Jean Piaget. Before we further move forward on the next slides, here are our objectives. Who is Jean Piaget? What is cognitive development theory? How do we acquire language? 
What are the hallmarks of cognitive development for each stage? And finally, what are the implications of this theory to us? Okay, let's start. On this slide, this is Jean Piaget and he is the proponent of the cognitive development theory. Jean Piaget's cognitive development theory is truly a classic in the field of educational psychology. This theory fueled other researches in theories of development and learning. Its focus is on how individual construct knowledge. Jean Piaget was a Swiss psychologist known for his pioneering work on child development. His theory revolves around how children construct an understanding of the world around them. Piaget proposed that children go through specific stages of cognitive development, each with distinct characteristics that influence how they think, learn, and make sense of the world. Now, this theory isn't just about identifying different stages of growth, it's about understanding how children's cognitive abilities evolve and how their thought processes transform over time. Piaget's theory had a tremendous influence on the emergence of developmental psychology as a distinctive subfield within psychology and contributed greatly to the field of education. He is also credited as a pioneer of the constructivist theory, which suggests that people actively construct their knowledge of the world based on the interaction between their ideas and experiences. Piaget, indeed was a trailblazer in developmental psychology and education. He introduced the idea that children actively construct knowledge through their experiences. This means that as teachers, you're not just giving students information, you're guiding them to discover and build their own understanding. In simple terms, Piaget's theory explains that children move through specific stages as they grow, with each stage showing a new way of thinking and understanding the world. At each stage, children's cognitive abilities develop in both quantity and quality. High schoolers, imagine looking back at how differently you thought as a child compared to now, this theory explains those transitions. Before we further discuss his theory, let's also get familiar with these people. John Flavel expanded on Piaget's ideas by introducing metacognition, thinking about thinking. As teachers, encouraging students to reflect on their own thinking helps them become better learners. Metacognition is, put simply, thinking about one's thinking. More precisely, it refers to the processes used to plan, monitor, and assess one's understanding and performance. Metacognition includes a critical awareness of one's thinking and learning in oneself as a thinker and learner. Similarly, John Meyer and Peter Salovey's concept of metamood awareness of emotions reminds us that emotional intelligence is a vital part of learning. Do you ever think about how your emotions affect the way you learn? Just recall the learning principles we have discussed so far. Now, what is cognitive development? Cognitive development is all about how children process information, develop perceptual skills, learn language, and more. It's how their brains develop to understand the world. As teachers, you'll play a key role in nurturing these skills. Can you think of ways you can help young minds process and interpret new information? Is this important? Yes. Research tells us that developing metacognitive skills, learning to think about our own thinking, is crucial. It helps children become independent learners. As future teachers, how can you encourage your students to be aware of their own learning processes? Piaget proposed four stages that children go through as they develop. Each stage is a stepping stone to more complex thinking. We'll go through each stage, but the key takeaway is that children think differently at different ages. Understanding this will help you tailor your teaching to meet your students where they are. Piaget proposed four stages of cognitive development that every child goes through in a specific sequence. The stages are Sensory motor stage, birth to two years Pre-operational stage, 2 to 7 years. Concrete operational stage, 7 to 11 years. Formal operational stage, 12 years and older. Each stage represents a different level of thinking complexity. We will discuss each stage thoroughly on our next lesson. That's all for this introduction to Piaget's Cognitive Development Theory. I hope this brief overview of the basic concepts has piqued your interest. Remember that these processes, schemas, assimilation, accommodation, and the balance between equilibrium and disequilibrium are happening constantly as children grow and learn. In our next video, we'll focus on the sensory motor stage, where cognitive development begins from birth. Until then, reflect on how your own thinking has evolved as you've grown. 
In conclusion, Jean Piaget's theory of cognitive development offers a roadmap for understanding how children grow intellectually. As future teachers, your role will be to support students as they navigate through these stages, helping them adapt, build new schemas, and find balance between what they know and what they're learning. The journey of cognitive growth is ongoing, and you'll be there to guide and nurture their minds every step of the way. Remember, teaching is about more than passing on knowledge, it's about shaping how your students think and learn for life. So as you step into the classroom, keep Piaget's insights close and watch how your students evolve as thinkers. See you in the next video.